What is going on everybody and welcome to part 17e of Gary's Mod Game Mode Scripting. In today's part, we are going to be adding what I believe is the final thing for our ammo dispenser, which is the spawn limit. So, we're just going to be working in our shared.lua and init.lua file that are both in our ammo dispenser entity folder. So, let's go ahead and start with the shared.lua first. We have to add two more entity variables here. The first one being ent.limit, and that's just going to be the amount or the max amount of entities of this type that we want to be spawned by each player. So I'm just going to put this at 3 for now. So each player will be able to spawn 3 of these entities, and after that they won't be able to. Next up, the ent.owner, and we're just going to set this equal to nil. This is just the owner of the entity, and this will allow me to do stuff or uh, change the total amount of entities they have spawned when it is removed. And you'll see that in just one second. So that is all we need for the share.lua file. So go into this init.lua, and we want to start with our spawn function here. What we want to do is we want to first get the amount of entities they have spawned by just using a networked integer, which is just what we went over a few parts ago. So I'm just going to call this local int count, and set this equal to the player, which again is just passed in in the spawn function, colon get networked int, and class name dot dot count and this will just look for the networked integer that is uh, called class name which in this case will be ammo underscore dispenser and concatenate that with that with count so it'll be ammo dispenser count so it'll find that network integer if there's nothing there it'll automatically be defaulted to zero which in this case it will be defaulted to zero because there is no such thing as this networked integer at the moment next up we want to go ahead and check if the entity count is less than the entity limit, so 3. And if it is, we can go ahead and spawn this function, or spawn this entity. So if ent count is less than self.limit, and again, this self.limit is just the variable that was set in our shared.lua file. Then, and right down here below this return ent, we want to put an end. And let's just tab this over to make it look nice. Now whenever this does get spawned, we want to go ahead and set this owner variable to the whoever spawned it, so this player. And we do this by doing self.owner equal player, or PLY in this case. And that'll set the entity's owner to the player that ends up spawning it. And also, we want to go ahead and increment the entity count by 1. So we do this by doing poy set the networked int, and we want it to be called class name concatenated with count, and we are going to use this end count variable, and then just increment it by one, so plus one. So if it's zero, it'll go to one, and then one to two, and then so forth until it gets to three, and it will stop at three, because at three you've hit the limit and you can no longer spawn any more of these entities. And we still have to return something with this, so let's just go ahead and return nothing there. So if the limit is reached, just return nothing, don't do anything, and yeah. And we can later down the line go ahead and notify the player that they've hit the limit, or you don't have to, but that will prevent it from spawning the entity. Next up, we need a function that will... Uh, lower this value by 1 every time the entity is removed, and we use the built-in function called ent colon on remove. This will be called right before an entity is removed, so we can go ahead and do stuff such as grab the owner by using local owner equals self dot owner. This will grab whatever this value here is, and since it was set to the player entity, this will grab that player entity and store it in the owner variable. Next up, the class name. And this is just the class name of the entity. In this case, it'll be ammo underscore dispenser. And we do this by using self colon get class. Next up, we just need to lower the networked integer that we have by one. So we do owner colon set nwint and it'll be class name concatenated with count 
and then we want to get the value. And actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create another variable called end count here. And we're just going to have it be owner colon get nw int class name concatenated with count. And yeah, that'll grab the entity count. And then we can just do int count minus one here. And now if we go ahead and go into game, everything should be working. And I'm just going to reload it real quick just to make sure everything is working and I didn't miss a parenthesis or anything small like that. And it looks like we're good. So let's go ahead and spawn in a couple of these entities. One, two, three. And as you can see, I can no longer spawn anymore no matter how much I click this. But if I go ahead and remove it, I can spawn another one. Remove all three of them, I can spawn three more. Now if we go ahead and destroy these, I can still spawn another one. And if somebody else destroys them, you can go ahead and spawn another one and so forth. So that is how you set a limit with our scripted entities. And I believe this will conclude the ammo dispenser part. I believe we have everything we need in order to make these functional and actually, I guess you could say, complete. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.